The deepest points on our planet are not mountains or deserts. They are hidden wounds on the ocean floor, plunging nearly 11 kilometers into pitch black. These top 10 ocean trenches hold mysteries so profound that even our best sonar tools cannot always agree on how deep they go. Why do supposedly simple numbers keep shifting? And what dangers or discoveries wait at these extreme depths? Let us reveal Earth's true bottom and why its secrets are anything but settled. Far from any busy shipping lanes or bustling coastlines, the South Sandwich Trench lies hidden in the cold, restless waters east of the South Sandwich Islands. This is the Atlantic's most remote abyss, a place where storms roll in without warning and the nearest land is a string of volcanic islands battered by Antarctic winds. At its deepest, the trench drops to 8,265 meters in the area known as Meteor Deep. That is over eight kilometers straight down, a depth that would swallow Mount Fuji and leave its peak nearly two kilometers underwater. The geology here is relentless. The South American plate slides beneath the tiny South Sandwich Plate, bending the seafloor into a narrow V-shaped wound. Volcanic arcs rise nearby, but few ships dare linger. Rough seas and unpredictable weather have kept high resolution mapping rare and for many years, much of this trench was just a blank on the charts. Even today, only a handful of expeditions have managed to capture detailed sonar images before being chased away by pounding waves. Meteor Deep stands as a lonely benchmark, its numbers confirmed only recently by a 2023 survey after decades of uncertainty. Where most of the world's deepest trenches cluster in the Pacific, the South Sandwich Trench is an outlier a solitary rift on the Atlantic's edge. Its isolation and the constant threat of storms keep its secrets well guarded, making it one of the least explored frontiers in the ocean's hidden depths. Southwest of Guam and just east of the Philippines, the Yap Trench runs quietly beneath the restless surface of the Western Pacific. At first glance, it does not draw much attention. No famous shipwrecks, no world records, and not even a widely agreed upon name for its deepest basin. But this stretch of seafloor drops to 8,520 meters, making it one of the planet's true Hadal zones. Geologically, the Yap Trench sits at a crossroads where the Philippine Sea Plate slides beneath its neighbors, squeezed between larger, more dramatic subduction systems. Its depth figures, though, come with a twist. Depending on which survey you read, the deepest point might shift by dozens of meters, and the actual deep is rarely labeled on standard maps. This ambiguity is not just academic. During the Cold War, United States and Soviet Union bathymetric surveys often kept their best data classified, adding to the confusion and leaving gaps that still puzzle oceanographers today. Unlike its neighbors, the Yap Trench rarely features in textbook rankings, partly because its deepest spot does not carry an official title and partly because the Pacific is crowded with even deeper rivals. But the numbers are real, 8,520 meters measured in a region where tectonic plates jostle for dominance and the seafloor's story is still being written. Here, the mystery is not just how deep the water goes, it is how much of the story remains hidden in the data itself. North of Puerto Rico, the seafloor plunges into the Atlantic's deepest known trench, a scar that runs parallel to the crowded coasts of the Caribbean and the southeastern United States. The Puerto Rico Trench reaches its maximum depth at the Milwaukee Deep, measured at 8,380 meters. Unlike the remote chasms of the South Atlantic or the hidden trenches of the Western Pacific, this abyss sits uncomfortably close to millions of people. The geology here is complicated. The North American Plate grinds past and over the Caribbean Plate, twisting the seafloor into a long, uneven depression. This tectonic collision zone is not just a curiosity for scientists. It is a source of real-world risk. Powerful earthquakes have shaken the region throughout recorded history, and the trench's steep walls make it a hotspot for tsunamis that could reach the shores of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, or even the US East Coast within hours. In 1918, an earthquake near the trench triggered a wave that devastated western Puerto Rico, killing over 100 people. Today, the proximity of this deep water hazard drives constant monitoring and emergency planning. The Milwaukee deep numbers are precise. Modern sonar puts the uncertainty at just a few meters, but the threat it represents is measured in lives, not decimals. 
For the Atlantic, this is the final word in depth and a reminder that the ocean's most extreme places can have consequences far beyond their dark, silent slopes. East of Papua New Guinea, the New Britain Trench slices through the seafloor like a wound that never heals. Here, the planet's crust does not just slip quietly, it shudders and snaps. This is one of the world's most restless seismic zones, a place where the boundaries between tectonic plates are tangled into a patchwork of microplates, all jostling for space. The result is chaos underground. Since 1990, at least 22 earthquakes of magnitude 7.5 or greater have erupted from this region, each one powerful enough to reshape the sea floor and send shockwaves across the Pacific. At its deepest, the trench drops to 9,140 meters at a spot known as Planet Deep. That's nearly twice the height of Mount Kilimanjaro, flipped upside down and buried beneath the waves. The relentless grinding of the Solomon Sea Plate plunging beneath the Bismarck Plate creates a trench that is not just deep, but alive with motion. Aftershocks can rattle the region for weeks, and entire sections of the trench floor can shift in a single day. For oceanographers, the New Britain Trench is a challenge and a warning. The constant seismic activity makes it a natural laboratory for studying how the Earth's crust bends and breaks. It also means that measurements here are always provisional. What is true today might be rewritten by the next big quake. In the world of deep trenches, this is where the ground never stops moving. South of Japan, the seafloor falls away into the Izu Ogasawara Trench, a corridor of darkness nearly 10 kilometers deep, carved where the Pacific Plate dives beneath the Philippine Sea Plate. Here, pressure builds to more than a thousand times what we feel at sea level, and yet life finds a way. In 2022, researchers captured footage of a Hadal snailfish gliding at 8,336 meters, deeper than any fish had ever been seen before. Its body, almost translucent, is built for survival in a world of crushing force. The secret lies in its chemistry. These snailfish pack their cells with unique lipids, keeping their membranes fluid and their proteins safe from the relentless squeeze. Scientists believe these adaptations are so effective they could inspire new medicines or industrial materials back at the surface. The geology of the trench is just as dramatic. Steep slopes and shifting sediments make mapping a challenge, but the Izu Ogasawara is a crucial link in the chain that stretches all the way to the Mariana Trench. Unlike the chaos of the New Britain region, this trench is a quieter neighbor and it holds its own mysteries, especially when it comes to the limits of life. The snailfish, thriving where even robots struggle, stands as the emblem of Hadal resilience. Its presence hints at a hidden world still waiting to be explored, just beyond the reach of our deepest technology. Northeast of New Zealand, the Kermadec Trench slices into the seafloor for nearly a thousand kilometers, forming one of the world's deepest and most dramatic underwater valleys. Here, the Pacific Plate plunges steeply beneath the Australian Plate, creating a V-shaped scar that drops past 10,000 meters at its deepest, a place so remote and dark that only a handful of machines have ever reached the bottom. In 2014, the Kermadec became the scene of one of deep sea exploration's most sobering moments. The remotely operated vehicle Nereus, built by Woods Hole engineers to withstand the crushing pressures of the Hadal zone, was lost at a depth of 9,990 meters. Telemetry from the surface showed a sudden catastrophic loss of contact. It was an implosion triggered by the relentless pressure, nearly 1,000 times that at sea level. Nereus had relied on special glass spheres for buoyancy, but the tiniest floor, too small to see, proved fatal. The loss sent shockwaves through the engineering community. Within months, new designs emerged. Titanium hulls replaced glass, pressure testing protocols doubled, and fail-safe systems became standard. Today's Hadal vehicles carry redundant pressure sensors and backup capsules for critical data. The Kermadec Trench stands as a reminder that even with the best technology, the deep ocean remains a place where the sore, smallest oversight can end a mission in an instant. As explorers aim for even greater depths, every dive carries the lessons of Nereus, a warning etched into the blueprint of every new submersible. Off Russia's far eastern coast, the Kuril-Kamchatka Trench has long been a fixture in lists of the world's deepest places. 
For decades, encyclopedias and textbooks repeated a headline figure, 10,542 meters. That number, first recorded by Soviet expeditions in the 1950s, echoed through generations of science writing, earning the trench a spot among the planet's top five abyssal giants. But the story is more complicated and more revealing than a single number suggests. Modern oceanographers, armed with multi-beam sonar and real-time sound velocity profiling, have spent the last 20 years re-examining these legendary depths. The Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology, JAMSTEC, led a series of high-resolution surveys that changed the picture entirely. Their data, backed by independent teams using advanced echo sounders, found the deepest points in the Kuril-Kamchatka Trench to be closer to 9,600 meters, nearly a full kilometer shallower than the old record. The culprit was early soundings that relied on a fixed speed of sound in water, ignoring how pressure, temperature, and salinity can bend sonar waves and inflate depth readings by hundreds of meters. This is not just a technicality. The Kuril-Kamchatka Trench's place in the global rankings was built on a measurement error, not a hidden basin. Today, peer-reviewed bathymetric maps and international datasets agree the trench is spectacular, but it does not reach the depths once claimed. For anyone fascinated by the ocean's extremes, it is a lesson in healthy skepticism and the power of modern data. In the world of deep sea exploration, even the most trusted numbers can and do change. East of the Philippines, the ocean floor falls away into the Philippine Trench, a narrow, twisting abyss that holds the title of the world's third deepest. At its lowest point, known as the Emden Deep or Galathea Deep, the sea floor lies 10,540 meters below the surface. That is a drop deeper than the cruising altitude of a commercial jet and nearly as far down as any place on the planet. The story of Emden Deep begins in the early 1950s when Danish scientists aboard the research vessel Galathea set out to chart the world's hidden depths. Using wireline soundings and echo sounders, they confirmed what earlier German and American expeditions had only hinted at, a spot east of Mindanao that plunged beyond 10,500 meters. The Galathea team did not just measure the depth, they brought up sediment cores and deep sea animals, proving that life could thrive even in such a hostile place. Their findings, published in a series of detailed reports, became the gold standard for Philippine trench measurements and established Emden Deep as a fixture in global rankings. Geologically, the trench marks the line where the Philippine sea plate dives beneath the Sunda plate, creating a fault zone that is both dynamic and dangerous. Earthquakes and tsunamis are common along this stretch, with the trench acting as a pressure valve for the region's restless crust. Yet for all its drama, Emden Deep is less frequently visited than its Pacific rivals. The combination of unpredictable currents, thick sediments, and the ever-present threat of seismic activity has kept most submersibles away. The legacy of the Galathea expedition endures. Their meticulous soundings, backed by modern multi-beam sonar, have kept the Philippine Trench secure in the third slot, an archival benchmark confirmed and reconfirmed that stands as a testament to both scientific ambition and the enduring mysteries of the deep sea. East of Tonga, the seafloor plunges into the deepest trench in the Southern Hemisphere, a place known as the Tonga Trench. At its heart lies Horizon Deep, measured at a staggering 10,880 meters. This is where the Pacific Plate slides beneath the edge of the Indo-Australian Plate at the fastest subduction rate on Earth, sinking almost 24 centimeters every year. The geology here is relentless, carving a narrow crescent that drops deeper than Everest is tall. But numbers alone do not tell the full story. In 2019, explorer Victor Vescovo set out to confirm the true depth of Horizon Deep. His Five Deeps expedition was the first to reach the deepest point in every ocean, and the dive into the Tonga Trench stood out for its risk and precision. Piloting the submersible limiting factor, Vescovo and his team faced a descent into near-total darkness with pressures that could crush steel like paper. The dive log from that day reads like a checklist of hazards, creaks from the hull, unexpected currents, and a constant barrage of data from sonar and pressure gauges. As the submersible touched the silty bottom, the instruments recorded 10,823 meters, 
just shy of the headline figure, but still enough to secure Horizon Deep's place as the world's second deepest spot. The mission did not just verify the depth, it set a new standard for how the Hadal zone is measured. Every reading was double-checked against sonar profiles and water column sound velocities, reducing the uncertainty to just a handful of meters. The Tonga Trench, once a shadowy rumor on old charts, now stands as a modern benchmark, its depth confirmed by the kind of hands-on exploration that pushes both technology and human resolve to the edge. East of the Mariana Islands, the Pacific seafloor falls away into the deepest known chasm on Earth, the Mariana Trench. At its lowest point, Challenger Deep, the ocean plunges to 10,935 meters. That is nearly 11 kilometers straight down, a vertical drop that would bury Mount Everest beneath more than two kilometers of water. The geology here is relentless. The ancient Pacific plate bends under the edge of the Mariana plate, forming a trench so steep and deep that sunlight, warmth, and even most forms of life never reach its bottom. For decades, Challenger Deep was just a number on a chart measured by echo sounders and weighted lines. That changed on January 23, 1960, when the Bathyscaphe Trieste, a strange white submersible shaped like a steel balloon, began its legendary descent. Inside, Swiss engineer Jacques Picard and US Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh settled into a cramped sphere surrounded by nearly 20 centimeters of steel. The dive took 52 minutes, with the pressure outside rising to over 1,000 times that at the surface, enough to crush a nuclear submarine like a tin can. As Trieste neared the bottom, a loud crack echoed through the cabin. One of the outer plexiglass viewports had fractured under the strain. Still, Picard and Walsh pressed on, reaching the silty floor and peering into total darkness. Their logbook recorded a simple note. Visibility zero. Bottom composed of diatomaceous ooze. No one had ever been so deep, and for decades, no one would return. Trieste's dive proved not just the depth, but the possibility of human exploration at the planet's most extreme frontier. Later dives by robotic landers, deep diving submersibles, and explorers like James Cameron and Victor Vescovo have refined the numbers, but Challenger Deep remains the benchmark. It is the final word in ocean depth, a place where the limits of geology, engineering, and human courage all converge. Even today, more people have stood on the moon than have reached the bottom of our planet's deepest trenches. As sonar, robotics, and global mapping projects like Seabed 2030 push further, every new measurement could rewrite our map of Earth. The true depths remain a moving target, reminding us how much of our own world is still uncharted. What would you explore if given the chance?